This is CFRB Toronto. Now we have a spot of showbiz for the Sunoco people and we're ready to roll right into it this very minute. Well, filming has been finished in Recommendation for Mercy, a story about Stephen Truscott, who was convicted of the rape and murder of a 12-year-old girl. Because the boy at 14 was sentenced to be hanged, there was emotional outcry, and as a result, not the usual appeals, but one extraordinary appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada. All appeals upheld the original verdict, and yet there are still people who think Truscott, who was released several years ago, was innocent, and this picture takes that view. In other words, arresting officers, the magistrate at preliminary trial, a Supreme Court judge and jury who tried the case, the Appeal Court of Ontario and the Supreme Court of Canada were all wrong and this lad was framed. The camera crew was refused access to the actual places involved in the arrest and trial, so they winged it by using other jails and courtrooms. The picture will be released in the spring. Summer theater across the province continues to rack up good business. As a sample, the Kawartha group at Lindsay set a record with arsenic and old lace. That oldie, using Araby Lockhart of Toronto and Joan Panton of Winnipeg, did 90% business. The season as a whole, now a bit beyond the halfway mark, has averaged 78%. Golf champ Johnny Miller, who passed up the Canadian Open in Mississauga because his wife was on the verge of having a baby, got the baby yesterday. She was about three years, no, not three years, three weeks late and a girl. Lowell Thomas, the continent's oldest news broadcaster at 82, has signed a new two-year contract for one network show a day. Frank Sinatra has been ordered to appear before a questioner for a federal court to answer queries about his drinking. It's the result of a lawsuit for two and a half millions launched by Frank Weinstock of Salt Lake City on a claim that Sinatra and others beat him up in the washroom of a nightclub in California. Sinatra, who tried to brush this off as a nuisance suit, failed but did get some consideration. The evidence will be taken in Nevada, August 24, where Frank will be visiting, and questions in this part of the hearing, at least, will be confined to no other subject than drink. How much, where, in what time, is this a normal intake for you, and so on. There was no evidence at the time of this disagreement that Sinatra had been drinking at all. Bing Crosby is to do another TV show, inevitably called a spectacular or a special, to mark his 70th birthday. Our story says he's fully recovered from lung surgery of last January, and you can buy that based on recent commercials he's made. Looks a bit wrinkled, but sounds fine. From the sea come the salmon, from the salmon come taste. From gold seal come salmon and taste The salmon so pure that there's nothing to waste For oh, you cut the best of the cash Gold seal salmon mm -hmm, You cut the best of the cash Nestle's now and the supper time news on a beautiful day. Not an awful exciting day in news, but there's this and that that might interest you. It's been mentioned several times today that former President Nixon has been called as a witness for the defense in the September 9 trial of John Ehrlichman. We were puzzled here as to whether or not Nixon had received the subpoena because this had not been stated in many dispatches. It turns out he has not been served with any papers. In fact, the sheriff's office in San Clemente, California, has not itself received any paper to be served on Nixon. But the story from Ehrlichman's lawyer in Washington made it sound as if this was an accomplished fact. Top foreign news continues to be fighting in Cyprus, where there was little doubt from the beginning that the Turks, who had ignored a ceasefire, had the upper hand. This was confirmed uh, in tonight in Athens time, when the Prime Minister there said there was no possibility of a fighting war in the island to save the Greek community. He pointed out that Greek supplies would have to move 300 miles, Turkish supplies only 45, and the Turks already have the biggest force on the island. It therefore seems that the Turks will win their demand for Cyprus as two provinces, or perhaps now they'll go further and take it over as a Turkish colony. Negotiations toward ending the transit strike are expected to reach the point of broken shift working conditions tomorrow. But anybody knows that's not the key issue. The key is money. 
and Leonard Moynihan, chief of the local of this American-controlled union, gave no date when the issue of money might be discussed. It's the leisurely way in which these negotiations seem to be going on that angers many citizens. This is especially so when there's repeated mention that at the beginning of the strike during the pre-dawn hours of Monday was the precise position that had been known and written about last April 23. They played around all spring, most of the summer. They ignored the deadline set by the union, and now the city is tied up. Actually, except in the downtown core, traffic is moving reasonably well. Transit drivers presently getting about $172 a week are seeking $240 spread over two years and are not likely to get it, but where the compromise will come is anybody's guess. Here are a couple of firsts from yesterday's news. In Wichita, Kansas, a completely naked bank bandit temporarily got away with $2,400 from a surprised and possibly amused girl teller. The bandit was later captured by a citizen who in the process had some of his own clothes, including his trousers, torn off. Raymond Cox has been charged. In London's Old Bailey Court, under a woman judge, a woman clerk, and a jury of 12 women, a male defendant was quickly acquitted of theft. Dr. Jim Miles, psychiatrist at the Health Center of the University of British Columbia, reports on skimpy evidence that the wives of medical doctors and psychiatrists have more mental problems than other women. The goofy part of this report is that Miles bases his findings on conversations with 20 women. There must be tens of thousands of doctors' wives in Canada alone. And this guy, after talking with 20 of them in one location, says physicians' wives are mentally depressed. Five weeks ago, amid the expected publicity, the first woman was sworn in as chaplain to the U.S. Army. The Reverend Alice Henderson now feels a bit let down since she has no uniform and no assignment. She gets paid for doing nothing. She's five foot one and 111 pounds, hence uniforms have to be made special. And, says the Army, even though she's been sworn in, she has to go through a chaplain's school where there'll be 54 men and herself in the class. The Padre has a son, but our story makes no mention of any husband. Last spring, Alberta dietitians opened a 10-day camp for teenaged, overweight girls. Their hope was to slim the girls by an average two pounds in 10 days, but they did better than that. The average of 31 girls was 197 pounds when they started, and they reduced by an average five pounds each. A follow-up test made yesterday showed that each and every one of the 31 girls now weighed more than ever before. One is 234, and she's quite short. Some of the 31 girls have now agreed to go on a more strict course of training, but all have rejected psychiatric help, if help is the word. I don't know what a psychiatrist could do in relation to fat. Charles Evers, the first black mayor elected in Mississippi, has been indicted on a charge of income tax evasion of $56,000 over two years. He says he's been framed by people who were out to get him because of his fight for racial causes. Well, some people might even believe this. You know, some people even believe horoscopes. Clay Shaw, 60, who was charged in a highly publicized case in 1969 with plotting to assassinate President John Kennedy, died early today of cancer. He was acquitted of the charges at the time, and he had filed a $5 million damage suit against District Attorney Jim Garrison, but it never came to trial.